Hello everybody and welcome to the EB Podcast. In today's podcast I'll be giving my thoughts on the pay cap, inheritance and the lack of understanding of basic economics by some of our politicians. But I only thought I would begin with a story which started uh, yesterday, which I thought was quite shocking. So four members, uh, serving members of the army, were arrested under anti-terror laws on suspicion of being members of a banned neo-Nazi group called National Action, as well as planning some kind of terror offence. Uh, a fifth person who is a civilian, uh, he's also been arrested on the same charge. One of the officers, uh, one of the soldiers, sorry, was detained by the Royal Military Police in Cyprus. Um, police raided homes early on Tuesday morning, including, I believe, in Birmingham. Now, these uh, these scumbags were part of a horrible group, one which deposed gay rights and supported the killing of Joe Cox. I mean, some, you know, some seriously horrible stuff that these people seem to believe in. Um, And also, on top of that, I think this sort of represents a wider issue because it just creates a bigger problem for our police um, because they're trying to deal with the threats of of Islamic terrorism, which, as I said yesterday, they're already at full capacity doing. Um, So it doesn't help when you have people like this planning an attack and just creating more of a scene, more of a problem, more of a workload for our already overstretched uh, arms forces and special forces and police. So uh, anyway, moving on, uh, there was a big fuss this morning uh, and last, last night, I think, about the government's leaked paper regarding some of our Brexit plans. Now, the paper that was leaked contained details of how the government plans to reduce low-skilled immigration from parts of Europe. Now, from a sort of heartless perspective, uh, you can see that this would help British workers uh, and foreign workers already in the UK. Uh, this is due to the economics of it. Because when you reduce the supply of labour into an economy, it means that you have less people to do the same amount of work, which means that you pay them more. Um, So say, for example, you have two people who are doing a building job and they both do half a week each and they both make £50 per half week. Let's keep it simple. Now, uh, if one of them isn't in the equation in the first place, say, for example, this is a potential low skilled immigrant who doesn't get let in because they don't have the right qualifications, then you give the person that remains £100 for doing the full week of work. So therefore, on an economic level, I don't have a problem with the plans. However, of course, there were many people, particularly on the left, who decided to sort of moan and name call without hearing the reasoning, uh, which is quite annoying. But as Frank Sinatra said, that is life. Now, I want to move on to Vince Cable, leader of our popular pressure group here in the UK, the Liberal Democrats, as he said today that he thinks that inherited wealth is fueling inequality and the taxing of it needs to be reformed, or most likely, in his case, as with Jeremy Corbyn, increased. Um, and I have to say, I've never understood the fairness of punishing someone for obtaining a large amount of money, usually through hard work, or sort of other inheritance, um, to pass on to their children. Because surely you should be rewarded for working hard and making use of the capitalist system we have, in order to make money. Now, I think this point counts for those families who have inherited wealth through generations, Um, these so-called rich kids as well because somewhere down the line whether it was 10, 20, 30, 40 even 100 years down the line someone has had to work very very hard in order to obtain that wealth so I personally uh, think it is unfair to uh, take inheritance away from richer people now keeping on the subject of fairness and money There was a big, big issue, and I believe a protest as well, about the issue of infamous 1% pay rise cap on public sector workers' wages, with the main issue being focused around nurses. Now, my view on this is quite torn, because, you know, due to being a college student myself, as well as having family and friends that work in the NHS and the teaching profession, I understand the vital and hard work that many public sector workers do. You know, teachers ensure that generation after generation of bankers, investors, entrepreneurs, authors, historians, athletes, inventors, designers, and many more professions have the skills necessary to keep our great nation where it is economically. And of course, we can't forget about NHS staff, who I've had plenty of experience knowing personally and being treated by, who do a tireless, important and stressful job keeping us alive. Now, while I do not, and quite frankly cannot, discredit them in any way, and I won't, 
I have to mention though the economic side of this. So under our government government provided healthcare system, the NHS, it will remain very difficult to increase wages for these people because without simultaneously uh, increasing tax revenue in the same way, it's very difficult uh, to pay for it. But there is hope, uh, but it's not an idea that many people, particularly on the left, would like, and that is privatization. Now, before I get into the details of a private system and everyone jumps on me for being a hardline conservative, uh, which I'm sure will be more relevant um, in when this issue eventually gets brought up uh, near to the next election. I'd just like to tell you about a fact I learned when researching this earlier. So in the UK, the average nurse's salary, this is with our uh, public healthcare system, the average nurse's salary is £29,000 in the UK. It's a bit lower for junior doctors, that's why there's been protests about it. But if you look over at the US where they have a fully working uh, healthcare system, a privatised or partially privatised um, healthcare system which has a bit of government uh, intervention that's the whole Obamacare thing that Trump is worried about and wants to repeal although he's failing so far um, the average salary from a qualified nurse in the US is almost fifty three thousand um, dollars that's the uh, sorry fifty three thousand pounds that's the figure converted from dollars now this surely would show that this could potentially be another avenue by which we can increase doctor salaries in the UK without having to resort to a potentially dangerous return to mass borrowing or by giving people less money to spend by raising taxes. Um, meaning economic activity in the UK will likely fail if we raise taxes, uh, so fall if we raise taxes because people will have less money to spend. Um, there will be less activity, businesses won't have as much to invest, there will be less growth. Um, and it will just bring added problems that we don't uh, really need. Now, this subject was, of course, brought up today during uh, PMQ's session, uh, where Jeremy Corbyn was back questioning May, along with uh, other MPs, on recent key issues. There was one issue, however, which I believe to be quite important due to the example of what has happened abroad. Now, I'm talking about the issue of zero-hours contracts at McDonald's. There is expected to be a 40-man strike on Monday in the Cambridge and Crayford branches, Crayford is in South East London, um, over a low pay and the use of zero-hours contracts by the firm. Now, the reason I believe this could actually be a risk for staff and sort of shooting themselves in the foot is because of McDonald's previous uh, not-so-empathetic <laughs> response to this. So, um, in late November last year, there were nationwide protests by McDonald's staff promoting their Fight for 15 campaign. That is their bid to get the McDonald's starting wage and eventually the minimum wage nationwide to $15. Um, they went on strikes, they're entitled to do whatever people think of it, but what well, they actually found, as uh, Julia Kaloe and Nicholas Lawson pointed out in their Forbes report after the event, was that they were eventually replaced by machines. So uh, these are the machines I'm sure many of you have seen in our McDonald's stores where you put in your card, select your meal items and pay. Now this led to a lot of staff losing their jobs over in the States, particularly the ones who complained about the wages, the ones who didn't, I'm pretty sure a lot of them got to keep their jobs or move out elsewhere in the firm. Um, as I'm sure, you know, uh, a lot of you will gather, this caused a lot of problems over in the US, there was quite a bit of uh, ruckus about it. Um, but I'm fearful that this is the situation that could be sort of bestowed upon our staff in the UK, especially the ones protesting on Monday. Um, now, McDonald's can, I fear, will do this because they're a very rich company, so installing machines won't be, um, you know, much of a burden for them. Also, you don't have to pay them a wage. They don't need perfect working conditions. They can work 24-7, and they'll constantly provide a great service to all customers. Of course, it won't be the same as someone talking to you, but for people especially who are less confident maybe or uh, you know sort of social problems they can just go in or they have less time they can just go in press a thing and get out so I personally would recommend that the staff of these firms individually negotiate their pay and contracts with the owners of their store or simply find a more convenient job so right that's it from me today, including my career's advice. I'll be back tomorrow with some more news commentary, most likely think, uh, featuring a new proposed Labour policy to do with football, which is an issue close to my heart. Um, so I'll be talking about that. 
and I've just got a text from a friend about a gender neutral uniform policy in a school uh, in the UK which is kicking up which or may kick up quite a fuss so as always I'm Max and thank you for watching the EB podcast